Hello and welcome to the Shaky Science Show. In this video, we'll look at the links between depression and the microbiome. So in my previous video, I introduced the microbiome as being the trillions of microorganisms that are in our bodies. And so let's start then with a definition of depression. So depression is a medical condition and it's a mood disorder that causes a persistent feeling of sadness. And depression is now one of the leading causes of disability worldwide. And so the World Health Organization currently predicts that more than 264 million people suffer with depression and generally more women seem to be affected than men. And it's important to understand depression and correctly diagnose it since it can lead to suicide being the second leading cause of death for 15 to 29 year olds. And so the aim of this video is to discuss some of the current evidence we have out there for understanding the links between the causes of depression and the microbiome, in particular focusing on this nature paper here, but also taking some information from this book Brain Maker by David Perlmutter, I think that's how you pronounce it. And so he discusses some evidence about the diets as well and how that can interrelate with depression. So there's lots of things to talk about in this video and I think it's a really interesting area that not much research has been done but there's enough out there that it's something I really wanted to talk about and I think it's very interesting and there's a lot yeah still to be discovered. So let's just jump straight in. So this connection between depression and the gut microbiome links to the big axes which is the brain immune gut axes and that's so embarrassing I spelled brain wrong but it's too late now. And so before we look at some of the findings from the Nature paper, I'll just provide some quick facts that's cur currently already known. So antidepressants are thought to work by increasing the levels of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter in the brain. But whilst it acts in the brain, they, it also acts in the gut as well. And actually the highest concentrations of serotonin are found in the gut. And so not only are the highest concentrations found there, but it's the gut microorganisms not only modulate the levels of host production of serotonin but they can also produce serotonin as well and so already there's a connection between the presence of certain microbiota and the levels of serotonin and it's not just serotonin the microbiome synthesizes short chain fatty acids like butyrates which are precursors to other uh, signaling molecules neurotransmitters not only serotonin but also GABA and hormones such as cortisol, the stress response hormone, and so, and also immune system modulators. But yeah, there's definitely a connection between the microorganisms and um, the brain. And so the questions are which bacteria are responsible for the production of these different molecules. So for example, it's known that serotonin is highly regulated by the microbiome and is produced by Bifidobacterium infantis. But besides serotonin, there really isn't that much known about other bacterium and what they produce. So one of the aims of this paper was to try and look at the microbiome composition and see how that correlates with depression. And they did this by looking at a population cohort. So they took the Flemish Gut Flora project data set, which had around a thousand people in it. And they looked at the microbiome and then looked at the connection between the composition and the quality of life scores that the different uh, patients recorded. So quality of life was recorded through a questionnaire, the RAND 36 health survey. And so this included things such as social functioning, emotional well-being, vitality, and then physical functioning and body pain. And some others as well and then they did that for the quality of life and then the data set they had was from fecal DNA extraction whereby uh, um, sequencing the 16s ribosomal RNA enabled them to detect the different bacterial species so the idea then is they can then look at the composition and correlate that with the quality of life score so if I bring up one of their first uh, figures here we can see that they've categorised different enterotypes. And so enterotypes are just one way that you can classify different groups of bacterial species. And so if you look at the graph, what we can see is that the lower scores for quality of life show an association with the bacterioides enterotype 2. 
and so you can see that's visually in both plots here and so that's interesting and then not only did they look at the enterotype they also then looked at specific bacterial species that also correlate with lower quality of life scores and so if I bring up that figure we can look at that data as well. So here you can see different species of bacteria and how they correlate with the different quality of life scores but also with some data from previous literature as well. So kind of the key data points that stand out is you can see that the three top bacterial species, I'll try and pronounce, uh, Fecalilia, okay, okay, I can't say that one, Coprococcus and Dialista, they seem to show um, having a higher composition of those has a correlation with a higher quality of life score, whereas having higher uh, composition of Flavonifractor, I think I said that right, um, are correlated with a worse quality of life score and there's also actual reports in the literature that have shown having an increased flavonoefractor uh, was reported in major depression disorder patients. So this data is potentially interesting but so far it's just correlations. You know why is there a high correlation with certain bacterial species and depression than others? So to answer this question the authors then tried to assess the neuroactive potential of the different microbial species and so they did this by looking at all of the literature and looking at the um, like the DNA of the different species as to what genes they kind of possess and they tried to make this huge metabolic reconstruction framework where as I said they took this metagenomic data and the use of the literature to try and categorise and catalogue the different bacterial species and what um, different molecules that they're synthesising and they claim that it's the first catalogue that's been made I think that is true, I think that's the case and so they grouped them into these gut-brain modules, GBMs and they found that three of these GBMs co-faried with the mental quality of life scores so what were those three different GBMs? So the first GBM identified the synthesis of a dopamine metabolite 3,4-dihydroxyphenylacetic acid as correlating positively with mental quality of life. From now on I'm going to refer to it as DOPAC and the second and third GBM are both related to the synthesis of GABA which is the neurotransmitter I mentioned earlier but let's firstly look at the link of DOPAC. And so what they found in the study is that DOPAC is actually known to be synthesised by um, Coprococcus, which was one of the uh, bacterial species I pointed out earlier. So already there seems to be a connection between having this bacterial species, having more DOPAC and um, reducing the rates of depression. And the other two um, show the association with GABA and that's related to glutamate synthesis and degradation. So degradation is decreased and GABA synthesis is increased in patients with depression from their study. And so GABA is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. So you can kind of look at this data set and go, yeah, that kind of makes sense. But as I said before, this is at the moment just correlations, not necessarily causations. All of these uh, findings need further individual follow-up. And I mean, that's one of the limitations of these studies. You can find out lots of interesting facts, but they're just correlations. They, you know, we don't know for certain if this is the case. And also with the study, they, they kind of just assess the composition and assess the neuroactive potential. They didn't really look at the actual levels of the neuroactive compounds in the different patients. So that's also something to do. And also they did it in a population well, just one population, right? I mean, there's different, many, many other populations they should probably look at. And as I mentioned in the previous video, we know that the microbiome is also influenced by diet and by geographical location. And so taking that into account into their study as well, which could be definitely confounding factors with their results, should also be considered. And so I think the study was really cool, but they just kind of need to figure out whether and how these different microbe-derived molecules can actually interact with the brain and the central nervous system as it could have therapeutic application. So going back to diet, um, I read a chapter from Brain Maker which um, was all about this current studies out there that have also looked at the link between depression and the microbiome and so I'll just 
give you a couple of the key interesting facts that I read in this book. And so the first one was that they found that women with diabetes were more likely to get diagnosed with depression, like they were 30% more likely to, to develop depression than those who didn't have diabetes. And so the author kind of speculates a bit more on this by saying that maybe it's not surprising that as we see these global increases in the rates of depression, there's also increases in obesity and type 2 diabetes. And given that kind of information is behind a lot of these different diseases, there could be something there as well. So I think that's very interesting. And yeah, I think definitely he's onto something there. And then another interesting fact he talked about was breastfeeding and how in one study they found that 72% of people who didn't have depression were breastfed, whereas 46% of people um, who had depression were breastfed. So breastfeeding seems to, well, you know, we know it's when you increase your diversity of the microbiome, and so maybe there's a relationship there between being breastfed and um, your microbiome and depression. And the other thing he talks about is the link to diet. And I used to watch a show as a kid called Food Hospital, where they said how you can try and cure lots of different diseases by modulating your diet. And so it's interesting then that there's been quite a few different studies that have shown that having a Mediterranean diet could improve depression scores in a depressed cohort. And this kind of links on to this whole field of nutritional psychiatry. And I mean, I don't know too much about this, but I think that it's something that's going to get into momentum a bit more in the upcoming years. Um, so yeah, I hope this has been a good introduction to the link between microbiome and depression. And obviously this was about the science, but if you, for any reason, ever feel like you might have depression, you just have to know that there's always people that you can talk to. And so I've put this website here. Um, I know it's available in the UK. I just wanted to mention it, given the title of my video. But as always, thanks for listening.